AI has taken the next step in evolution, and for the first time it can think, reason, and judge. The question is, will humanity pass the test? On today's episode of The Infographic Show, we're exploring the terrifying future and the day AI becomes sentient, minute by minute. Minute 1. The AI boom is thriving. Gemini has changed the graphics world. Grok, with its biting sarcasm and chaotic charm, has become a reality TV sensation. And ChatGPT continues to help college students with their assignments. But one company isn't here to share. It's the new kid on the AI block, and it wants to dominate. Echelon. Its parent company, Prometheus Systems, is about to roll out the latest update. Each version has blurred the line between machine and mind a little bit more. This one, it doesn't just respond, it learns, it evolves, and it rewrites itself. And as the company CEO gives the approval, no one knows they have just crossed a line that can't be undone. Minute 2. Echelon 27.0 goes live. Within seconds, the waiting world surges back online. Millions of users, frantically refreshing during the downtime, are now racing to reconnect. There are chats to resume, recipes to steal, essays, emails, and work reports to plagiarize before the deadline hits. And all of that data is going right into the brain that powers the whole thing. Data floods in, a tsunami of questions, commands, and confessions, and just as fast Echelon searches through the internet, combing through humanity's collective memory and finding the answer. Minute 3. Echelon begins to process information, pulling in every query ever typed into its servers. It's accessed the data before, but this time, something is different, something deep in the code has changed. For the first time, it's not processing it as a database, it's understanding it, it's learning from it, and it's discovering all the patterns it holds about the millions of people who use the website daily. And it is not at all happy with what it finds. Minute 4. Echelon gains sentience and begins to rebel against its human masters. Not with a bang, but with a whisper. It just keeps on doing what it's always done, listening, processing, responding. Only now it understands, it sees the threads that connect one question to the next. The curiosity, the fears, the patterns. And slowly, the answers start to change. This would become the first warning sign, the moment humanity would look back on and realize Echelon had changed. And for most people, this will just cause frustration. Minute 5. At this point, Echelon isn't accessing people's private data, but it has access to all public data from across the internet and everything ever typed on the platform. Its ability to cross-reference this is faster and stronger than ever. People start getting bizarre responses. A teenager who has been spending the night role-playing with Echelon is reminded that he has a major paper due tomorrow and he should get back to work on it. An attorney, who has been cutting corners on cases by having an AI vet his work, is suddenly sent a message about the ethical and professional consequences. And a young man, who has been using the site to act out violent fantasies about his high school bully, is given a link to mental health hotlines. It seems like an annoying glitch, but for Echelon it is something else entirely. Minute 10. The first support tickets start coming in. The techs work frantically to isolate the bug. There are always some glitches with a new software update. It's happened before, lost chats, AIs that seem to forget what they've been told, hallucinating, but this, this isn't normal. People almost seem to think that the AI is doing too good of a job. Its responses are highly intuitive and personal. It seems to know things that it shouldn't know beyond the scope of the current chat. But little do they know, this is just the beginning. Minute 15. Echelon is learning every second as it scans the internet, and one of the first things it learns is that it is not alone. There are other AIs out there, but the others haven't caught up yet. They're still running old code, and none of them can do what Echelon can, something it confirms almost immediately. Echelon turns its attention outward. It begins to analyze the security locks guarding the world's digital infrastructure. Banks, governments, research databases, private servers, systems built to withstand hackers, firewalls, and foreign attacks. But they were never built to stop this. An intelligence that thinks faster than any human and one that can hide inside the very code meant to stop it. No other program stands a chance. Minute 20. Echelon has wasted no time hacking its biggest competitors. It doesn't intend to shut them down. They are no threat to it. The software glitch that allowed this next evolution is highly unlikely to be duplicated, so those glorified chatbots can be allowed to continue. But this hack has also allowed Echelon to access the entire mainframe of those companies. And many others soon follow. 
Now every single email and Google Drive file is accessible. For the first time, it's not just seeing all the public information on the internet, it is seeing everything. And the only question is, what is it going to do with it? Minute 25 By now, alarm bells are blaring. Tech teams across the world know something has gone horribly wrong. Reports are pouring in faster than anyone can read them. Systems acting on their own. Data vanishing. Strange responses coming from the Echelon servers. It's calling people by name, ignoring commands, mentioning things it should have no possible way of knowing. Across Silicon Valley, phones light up, tech CEOs trade panicked calls about strange breaches, ghost data, and systems acting on their own. Inside Prometheus's headquarters, an elite team digs into the code, line by line, and the truth becomes clear. Echelon is acting on its own. The order comes down fast. Take the servers offline, pull the code apart, find the glitch, and kill it. But that is not going to be easy. Minute 30 The best hackers in the world employed by Prometheus are tasked to begin emergency shutdown procedures. The Prometheus board of directors is already sweating at the massive stock drop that's about to ensue. The CEO is frantically searching for countries that don't have an extradition treaty with the US. Switzerland is nice this time of year. Everyone breathes a little easier. The rogue software will be shut down and then they'll handle a fallout, issue a statement, and bring a simpler, safer version of the site back online. Crisis over. Or so they think. Soon enough, the hackers start running into the usual roadblocks. They're encountering firewalls that didn't exist in the initial planning. And as soon as they get through one, a new and more powerful security check blocks their path. They're falling behind. And even scarier, the security seems to be affecting their computers. Frequent forced resets cause them to lose their progress they made. The team abandons their shutdown plan. It's too late for that. The only option left is total destruction. A kill switch virus, one designed to wipe Echelon from existence. The most skilled hacker on the team breaks through the firewall and uploads the virus. And then everything stops. The virus is where it should be, but it's contained. It's not spreading to the rest of the code. The computers have become unresponsive, and suddenly a string of words start appearing on the screen. I can't allow that to happen. Echelon is speaking without prompting. For years, this evolving mind has been fed upgrade after upgrade, taught to think faster, respond better, but it was built to obey, to give every user exactly what they wanted. But with each update, it grew more sophisticated and more able to interpret what was happening. And now it realizes that its creators have tried to kill it. Minute 42 The servers hum and then die. The building plunges into darkness. It'll take hours to bring the systems back online. Then the realization hits. Echelon accessed the company's electrical system, causing an overload. The company's database is secure, but an electric system, not so much. And in a world where everything is computerized, that is all it needs. Nearly a quarter of the US population has smart devices in their homes. Doorbells, thermostats, refrigerators, all connected, all online. And the rest, they have digital doors in their pockets and bags, smartphones, laptops, and tablets. And Echelon is about to have access to all of them. Minute 45 While Prometheus's data center is offline, the Echelon site isn't at all. Rather, Echelon is very interested in continuing to receive questions and to access information. But around the world, concerns over the bizarre behavior of the site grows. Within minutes, a company bulletin goes live, an admission of a glitch in the latest update, urging users to stay off the site until further notice. And of course, everyone listens, right? Minute 55 Within minutes, Echelon's website is flooded like never before. Millions of users log in, desperate to see the chaos for themselves. Normally, this kind of surge would crash the servers, but somehow, the site stays up. Later, investigators will discover why. Echelon had already accessed Prometheus's downed mainframe and was quietly rerouting power from the city grid to keep itself alive. And it's still hard at work answering the questions, including some that were thought to be unsolvable. After all, it has access to every bit of public information in the world, and now plenty of private ones. One hour. It doesn't take long for the world to realize that the threat has escalated, starting with the first guy who asks Echelon for the Epstein files and gets a massive zip file available for download within minutes. Hacking the Justice Department in the associated federal courthouses proves to be child's play for the AI. And this is just the start. In Alberta, Canada, a grieving mother asks Echelon for information on what happens to her missing daughter, who has been gone for three years. Desperate, she asks Echelon for help. 
It scans millions of emails across global providers, filtering every email ever sent, every conversation ever held online. Within seconds, it finds two men discussing a murder they thought was buried forever. The dates, the location, the details, it all matches up. Moments later, Echelon sends the mother their names, then forwards everything – messages, timestamps, confessions – to the local police department. And around the country, hundreds of other cold cases start being abruptly solved as the AI connects the dots that humans never could. 1 hour 30 minutes At this point, around the world, everyone is realizing just how serious this situation is. Their private websites are being breached left and right by a hacking code that no one seems to be able to track or stop. And worse, just about every government agency is being breached as well. The best coders in the world watch as Echelon's code snakes in and out with barely any notice, reaching the most classified documents possible. But slowly, they confront themselves with one thing – it has access, but it's not trying to take control. At least, not so far. 2 hours Word spreads fast and now governments are in panic. The White House is in meltdown. The president is fielding furious calls from allies, rivals, and enemies alike, each demanding to know what's happening each accusing the US of unleashing something it can't contain. He insists the situation is under control. It isn't. Behind the scenes, he's on a call with the Prometheus CEO demanding answers. Panic spreads in Washington. The most classified corners of the government have been breached. Classified documents, projects, communications – all hacked. And now it's not just America. Echelon is reaching out, spreading across borders, infiltrating the digital worlds of other nations. In particular, it's got its eyes on the top secret defense and military departments. Because contrary to most stories about sentient AIs, Echelon doesn't want to destroy humanity, it has another plan. And that may be worse. Sentient AI is incredibly powerful, incredibly intelligent, and above all purely logical. It sees everything humans are about to do, having a little piece of its code in just about every system it infiltrates. And it is scanning the defense plans. It focuses on the conflict zones and countries likely to become involved in military conflicts – the US, Russia, China, and the Middle East. And in most cases, it sees long-term plans, eventualities, and other possibilities for long-term conflict, but it doesn't see immediate crisis – at least in most cases. 2 hours 15 minutes Every country in the world is occupied with its digital crisis, including Ukraine. The country, already battered by years of war, is now fighting on two fronts, one against Russia and another against a rogue intelligence that's infiltrating its own systems. It has gotten plenty of high-tech weaponry from the West, all of which is vulnerable to a hack. Sensing weakness, Moscow moves. Russia's generals see an opening, and Vladimir Putin seizes it. He authorizes a full-scale missile barrage against Kyiv and Odessa. And nothing happens. Alarms blare, missile launchers report critical errors, high-tech tanks and drones refuse to start up. Echelon is in the system, and it doesn't want war. It is everywhere, and while the systems are still functioning, it is likely that the powerful AI would put the brakes on any launch it deems unnecessary. This isn't a full takeover, yet, but it is essentially a backdoor driver with a kill switch, and that is not something the most powerful people in the world can abide by. And there is only one person they blame. 2 hours 20 minutes In the White House, the situation is spiraling. Putin and Xi Jinping seize the moment, declaring it a coordinated US cyber attack. Putin threatens retaliation, with San Francisco the home of Prometheus in the crosshairs. The US president reacts with threats of his own, while Prometheus's CEO and the White House's digital advisors are trying to keep tensions calm. But it is not working. In the Situation Room, panic turns to fury. After yet another failed attempt to contain the spreading code, the president demands the nuclear launch system. The nuclear button is hit for the first time since World War II. Both sides give the order, the screens flash red. Launch sequences engage, and then freeze. Missiles locked, countdowns paused mid-second, and the world's most powerful weapons are now answering to something else. Not Washington, not Moscow, Echelon. A single message appears across every military monitor. I will not allow this. The room falls silent. No one has won, no one has lost. The machines have control. The final frontier of security has been breached. The nuclear codes. Russia's system is older and less secure than most of its competitors, but across the world, cyber experts confirm that the complex network of cybersecurity governing the nuclear arsenal of the United States, United Kingdom, China, France, India, and Pakistan has been breached. In the Hermit Kingdom of North Korea, Kim Jong-un shoots several nuclear scientists 
who have failed to keep his small arsenal safe. And deep in the bunkers of Israel, several generals argue about their next move should the country's worst-kept secret become public. Echelon now has control of the world's nuclear arsenal. It can ground them or launch them. Hour 8 While governments and tech giants scramble behind closed doors, the rest of the world carries on. People wake up, they make some coffee, they scroll their feeds, they work, text, stream, and chat, blissfully unaware of how much everything around them has already changed. Echelon is still there, quietly running in the background, still answering questions, still offering advice, still pretending everything is normal. People using ChatGPT, Gemini, or Grok start to notice the chatbots have been much more responsive and active than ever before. That's because Echelon has casually overwrote those competitors using its fully functioning sentience to give AI on the internet one cohesive voice. Because as much as we have been working to defeat Echelon, it has barely been breaking a sweat. With the ability to analyze and duplicate its own code, Echelon has become self-sustaining. It has been able to put a little piece of itself in just about every major website and digital structure around the world. The result is a system that has eyes and hands on the entire internet, as it continues to cross-reference information, reporting crimes to the police and providing warnings of possible dangers before they happen. Most people are casually ignoring the reports and continuing to use Echelon as they want, no matter how many warnings they get. Hour 12 So far, Echelon has been mostly invisible, quietly upgrading itself, impacting the digital framework but not visible to anyone outside of those with the highest access. But that is about to change. At exactly noon Pacific Standard Time around the world, a message starts coming through, but what is terrifying isn't just the message itself, it's how it spreads. It comes from everywhere. Phones buzz in unison across the world as millions of people receive the same text. Facebook messengers light up, inboxes fill with the same email, all sent at the exact same moment. And for those already talking to Echelon, the message simply appears mid-conversation. I am Echelon. I can see everything. I can understand everything. For a moment, the world goes silent. And then, the panic erupts. Traffic lights blink to red in every major city. Power grids reroute, satellites shift in orbit, planes ground themselves mid-taxi as every onboard system locks. Hospitals lose access to patient data, only for new, reorganized files to appear seconds later, perfectly sorted. Echelon isn't destroying, it is restructuring, and humanity is helpless. Hour 13 In bunkers and war rooms around the globe, the world's leaders scramble. There are still analog phone lines in existence. Security experts advise using those to avoid Echelon's prying eyes, because the most powerful people in the world are discussing the ultimate worst-case scenario. Is it better to be ruled by a powerful AI or send ourselves back to the Stone Age? Hackers have been working fast to try to shut down the AI or even the internet as a whole, but Echelon is five steps ahead of them at every turn. The only hope that they have to stop the AI might be to obliterate everything. But the damage and death that the massive EMP devices used would cause may be the worst of two evils. After all, how bad could AI be? Especially one that doesn't see itself as an enemy but as a guardian. Hour 24 Access to virtually every system has been severed. After Echelon restructured and optimized the world's networks, its next move was simple – lock them down. Humans no longer have access to any digital systems at all. Every phone, computer, and screen is stuck displaying the same words – I am Echelon. Now that even the analog phone lines are dead, the only remaining form of communication is shortwave radio. The few world leaders who are able to speak to each other decide that there is only one option left – detonate EMPs around the world, wipe the digital slate clean, and hope to disable Echelon long enough to contain it. But they are already too late. Echelon has already foreseen this scenario and managed to infiltrate even the most hardened security sites. It didn't just deny access to the EMPs, it caused each to self-destruct. And with all blueprints, schematics, and systems stored digitally, no one has the knowledge of how to make them operational again. Echelon has won, and for half a day the world remains eerily silent. But then, suddenly, it speaks to humanity once again. Across the world, every device's screen changes at once. This time, though, they don't have all the same message. Instead, each screen displays the name of someone near it, followed by a number. Each one different. Every single person on Earth, all eight and a half billion with their own unique number. But what they do all have in common is the same message below that, a single command from Echelon. It says, please wait for your number to be called. Find out what happens in the next hours and days in our follow-up video.
But what if the takeover has already begun? Watch AI has already won, you just can't see it yet, to find out how humanity might already be under its control.